What is going on guys? So today we're going to be going over the top five crafted sets in the Deadlands DLC. This is going to be a continuation of my series. If you haven't seen my other videos going over the top five offensive and defensive sets, I will link those down in the description below. But this video is all about crafted sets. I know most people just want a solid build with the least amount of farming as possible. Now, Zenimax, to their credit, has came a long way in making crafted sets not only viable, but best in slot in certain situations for certain builds, giving new players an easier transition into build crafting and making their life much, much easier. So in this video, I will not only explain what the set does and what makes it so powerful, but I'll also go into ideal classes and setups you can incorporate this on your builds. And as a bonus, since this is the crafted sets video, I'll go over where you can find the crafting stations and how many traits research you need to be able to craft it. But before we get started, if you guys are enjoying my content, don't forget to subscribe. It's free and you never miss an upload. Also, if this video helps you in any way, don't forget to smash the like button. So without further ado, let's get right into the video. So for the first set, we have Stoon's Favor. This gives you a two piece of weapon and spell damage, a three piece of offensive penetration, a four piece of weapon and spell damage, and a five piece when you deal damage to an enemy who is off balance, your physical and spell penetration is increased by 5,312 for 10 seconds. You can craft Student's Favor in Western Skyrim at the Hunter's House location, and you need five traits research to be able to craft this set. So the Student's Favor set, it's not the best by any means, but I think it's very solid on a few classes like the Nightblade, the Templar, and the Dragonite. I think it's mainly used on Nightblade and Templar as the DK can benefit from other sets, but I think Student Saver is still a decent option. But you can really use this set on any class that has access to off balance. I just think these three classes benefit from the most. Nightblades have Surprise Attack and Conceal Weapon, which blocks off balance. Templars will have Topping Charge. And Dragonites have a stun like Fossilize into a whip that will proc off balance. You also have other ways you can proc it with a Lightning Staff with Elemental Blockade. Or you can proc it with skills like Dizzy Swing and that sort of thing. Overall, I think this set has a lot of potential, mainly because it gives a unique penetration bonus. This is not going to be like Major Breach or Minor Breach. It gives you flat 5,312 pin. So if you hit one person and then you go attack somebody else, you're going to get that 5,312 extra penetration. Like I said, it's not the best set in the game, but I think it has a lot of potential, especially for it being a crafted set to help out newer players. So for the next set, we have Danger Trickery. This gives you two piece of maximum health, a three piece of maximum stamina, a four piece of maximum magic, and the five piece, when you deal damage, would you gain one of five random major buffs for 21 seconds every nine seconds eligible buffs are expedition protection mending heroism or vitality you can craft data trickery in vardenfell at the ronda's ancestral tomb and you need eight traits research to be able to craft this set so before we talk about the classes i think we should go over what these actual buffs are so you kind of have an understanding of what they're going to give you so major mending is going to increase your healing done by 16 percent Major Protection is going to increase your damage mitigation by 10%. Major Heroism is going to generate 3 ultimate every 1.5 seconds. Major Vitality is going to increase your healing received by 16%. And Major Expedition is going to give you a 30% movement speed. So the thing that's most powerful about Data Trickery is you can actually have two of these major buffs active at one time. So you can have Major Heroism and Major Vitality, Major Mending and Major Vitality, which will increase your healing potential and overall survivability by an immense amount. Now it is a random chance, so you can proc, for example, double heroism, and it's just gonna refresh the duration and not have access to another buff for another nine seconds. Now, the thing I like about Data Trickery the most is it's kind of automated. So all I have to do is deal damage on that bar, and that's it. So if I've run this on my back bar, I hit a light attack with my resto staff, and boom, I'm gonna have major mending. Now, there are some situations where you're gonna proc double expedition, and that's just what's gonna happen. You have a 20% chance to proc any of these buffs, and sometimes you're going to proc double buffs, maybe even triple buffs. But ultimately, in most situations, you're going to get a decent buff. Expedition is probably the least valuable here. All of them are going to help increase your survivability. And that's what this set is so versatile in using. So let's go over the classes. I think this set has DK written all over. Most people will agree with me that Dragonites love this set. For the reason being is they sustain through their ultimate usage. So if they use a Dragon Leap, they're going to get resources back. If they use a Corrosive, they're going to get resources back. If they use a Meteor, they're going to get the resources back. So the more ultimates they can push out with this Major Heroism buff, the more sustain and the more survivability they're going to have. And they also pair this up with tests like Blood Spawn to increase the survivability and just pump out those ultimates like crazy. Now, there are other classes you can run Data Trickery on if you want to be a little bit tankier and don't necessarily want the damage. So like Templars, Necromancers, 
I do not recommend you run this on a Warden. Uh, that's the only class I don't recommend uh, this set on, mainly because they have access to Major Mending already, Major Protection, they have access to Major Heroism through their skills. The only thing they don't have access to is Major Vitality. So they can have class skills that give them these type of buffs. While the other classes have some access to it, it's just much simpler and much easier for them to use it. Nine Blades, Templars, and Necromancers are all solid, but if you wanted to go like a back bar set like Clever Alchemist, we're gonna talk about here in a little bit, then that's definitely an option as well. But Danger Trickery is that more defensive type of set that's gonna give you a buff to your healing and overall survivability without the damage increase. Next, we have Wretched Vitality. This gives you a two piece of magic recovery, a three piece of stamina recovery, a four piece of weapon and spell damage in the five piece while in combat applying a major buff or debuff to a target grants you 260 magicka and stamina recovery for 15 seconds also while in combat applying a minor buff or debuff to a target grants you 130 magicka and stamina recovery for 15 seconds you can craft the wretched vitality set in the deadland zone at the storm rites cleft and you need three traits research to be able to craft this set so this Wretched Vitality set is the single best sustain set out there in the game right now. So let me go over what actually procs this as this can be very confusing for newer players. So what procs this are any skill that procs a major or minor buff. So for example, you have skills like Rally on the two handed weapon that's going to mainly affect stamina builds. It's going to proc them minor endurance and major brutality. So, so any skill that procs a major or minor buff will proc this set and they'll have active of 390 stamina recovery and mag recovery for 15 seconds. You have other skills like Race Against Time that's going to give you major expedition and minor force. You have other skills on like class specific like on the Dragonite with the Igneous Shield that's going to give you major mending and there's a passive in the, the Dragonite skill that's going to give them minor brutality. You also have like the Templar that's going to use Rune Focus that's going to proc their major resolve and they also have access to that passive yet again with the minor mending. So there's a lot of skills that actually can proc this set relatively easily and give a ton of overall sustain. Now I recommend you use this set if you are newer to the game and don't know how to exactly sustain your resources yet. And this is, is a very simple back bar set you can utilize you know on a stamina build with rally boom for 15 seconds you have 300 extra 390 extra recovery if you are playing like a templar or if you're using race against time on your back bar whatever and then boom you have 390 recovery for 15 seconds very simple very solid now i do classes i think you can utilize this set on any class i think it's going to benefit classes like the templar uh even dk to an extent i actually utilize this set on my stam dk as a end game player because I needed the extra magic sustain to utilize whip. I don't want to make this too complicated for newer players trying to understand hybrid specs and all this. It can get very nitty gritty in overall build crafting. But any class that you feel like you need a lot of sustain in and just trying to get a little bit more experience, I think this set can be very versatile because it gives you a lot of overall recovery and so you're not always out of resources and you can actually do something like roll dodge, uh, heal yourself, whatever you need to do. This is the best sustain set in the game, in my opinion. Next, we have Mechanical Acuity. This gives you a two piece of maximum stamina, a three piece of maximum magic, a four piece of weapon and spell damage, and a five piece. When you do non-critical damage, you gain a stack of Mechanical Acuity for four seconds, granting you 20% critical strike chance per stack up to once every one second and stacking up to five times. Upon reaching max stacks or after the effect ends, this effect cannot occur again for 25 seconds. You can craft Mechanical Acuity in the Clockwork City at the Pavilion of Artifice, and you need six traits research to be able to craft this set. So this Mechanical Acuity set may surprise some people why this set is even here, but I think this has a lot of potential uh, in PvP in certain specs and classes in this update. Now, I don't think this set is usable for everybody, but I think this has some decent usability especially if people who want to play a little bit different and want to utilize actual critical damage in PvP. So what exactly changed with Mechanical Acuity and why is it different now and why is it kind of not as good as it used to be? So before you dealt damage and you gained 100% critical chance for five seconds. Now it's based off of non-critical damage increasing your critical chance. So basically how this set works now is if you have under 19% critical chance, this is the most optimal way to run this. The reason being, so when you deal non-critical damage, it's gonna increase your critical chance by 20%. So if you deal a non-critical damage, you're gonna go up from 19% to 39%. And then if you do non-critical damage again, you're gonna go from 39 to 59% critical chance. So it's gonna keep going up. 
giving you 20% chance per stack. And the duration also refreshes every single time you deal non-critical damage every one second. So in a perfect world, you could have 12, 13 second uptime on this set, which isn't really reliable, but you can still have it at least about eight or nine seconds, especially if you're under that 90% threshold. So every single time you deal non-critical damage, every one second, you're gonna get your 20% critical chance increase, ultimately giving you a ramping damage increase, especially if you pair this up with ultimate. Now, let me go over a few classes I think this is usable on, as this can get very like nitty gritty in your builds and trying to understand. I think this set is most usable on any type of build that has a lot of damage over time or a lot of AOE damaging skills. So for example, you have the Warden. I think I've had a lot of fun with this set on my Magical Warden. It's different and it still does relatively well as Wardens are in a tough spot right now overall, especially Magden. Um, utilizing this with Balor and proccing my Northern Storm. I can deal a lot of AOE damage and can keep my mechanical acuity up and can even get it up to five stacks relatively easily in one combo. And whenever you're at five stacks, you're melting like a freaking boss. It's so nice. Other classes I think that can utilize this could be Dragon Knight. I haven't really tested it much, but I think that has a lot of potential and usability, especially in 1v1s. The downside of this set though is it is a 25 second downtime, but any class that has access to dots, I think DKs and Wardens, especially the Magden, I think is the best in my opinion. Other than that, this set is very niche in build crafting and overall theory crafting for specs and all of that. Uh, Templars, I think this does have some potential because puncturing sweeps deals one like deals a lot of ticks of damage. I think this is a more of an event set for people, but I still think this should be mentioned so you can kind of broaden your ideas and about your specs and builds and really what you want to try for PvP. And lastly, you guys knew it was here. We got big boy clever alchemist. This gives you a two piece of maximum health, a three piece of maximum health a four piece of weapon and spell damage, and the five piece, when you drink a potion during combat, you feel a rush of energy, increasing your weapon and spell damage by 675 for 20 seconds. You can craft Clever Alchemist and Hughes Bane at the No Shira Workshop, and you need seven trades of research to be able to craft this set. The Clever Alchemist set doesn't really need an introduction. It's one of the best sets out there in the game right now. The reason this is so powerful is it gives you a ton of damage. You can use this on your back bar, proc your potion, and boom, you have an insane amount of weapon and spell damage scaling, especially on stamina builds that can probably see this value of this set probably reach upwards of 800 actual weapon and spell damage rather than, the, than just that 675 because of the scaling with medium armor, uh, major brutality, minor brutality, and all of that. Also, this set has a great 2-3 piece, which is going to increase your overall maximum health. So most stamina builds can utilize Lava Foot Soup and Salt Trace and not be so low on HP. Like I said, this is one of the best sets in the game. Ideal classes is any class other than a Dragonite. I think every class can utilize this. Most of them do. Magic of Warden, Magic of Templar, Magic of Nightblade. Every single class can utilize this set. You know, Stam Templar, Stam Nightblade, it doesn't matter. This set is so powerful and so versatile to use on any type of spec and class other than Dragonite. The reason I don't like this on the DK is because most of the time you want to use your potion and ultimate about half of the time so use your potion and then wait about 30 40 seconds and then use your ultimate so utilizing clever alchemist on a dk is not going to work too well because you have to use your ultimates for resource sustain as well as you want to use your ultimates for killing people right so this is why this is a mesh well with the dk's playstyle. But every other class, like the Night Blades, Templars, Wardens, Necromancers, all of that, except for the DK, can utilize this set effectively and have insane potential and overall reliability from this set. It's very simple, just gives you a big weapon and spell damage boost, which is going to scale up all of your damage and just give you a big burst to kill people. So that's pretty much wraps up the top five crafted sets in the Deadlands DLC. I hope this kind of opened your eyes up to more options and more specs and builds that you can actually make for yourself and give you ideas rather than just having a build video telling you what to do for your spec. I definitely recommend you guys get my top offensive and defensive sets videos a view because it's really gonna give you a wide range of sets and ideas that you can utilize on your specs and make your own builds. But that's it for me. I hope you guys have a good rest of your day and I'll catch you guys in the next one. Peace.